so obviously what gave me this re referral to work with you. Okay, so um, <clears throat> are you primarily uh, singing Broadway or pop or opera or what? Primarily my whole life I've sang, uh, I guess you would call it pop or rock. Okay. Yeah, and um, then the more I learned about music, the more I got interested in jazz. And uh, the opera would be just for the lessons for technique. Yeah. And I love it. It's amazing. But it's, um, I'm an adult. I'm, I'm not, I'm doing this to <laughs> be a music therapist. I've, I've sung in clubs and, and groups and bands and yeah. done all that yeah. thing. But I got that out of my system. This is more like, I, but I was never educated in music. Right, right. And th there, there, there is a sort of a, uh, a, a, there can be a snobbery. Uh, involved with the opera, uh, singing and technique and all that. They, it's amazing. They tend to make it sound like any other form of singing is uh, is is a lower form of singing or is an inferior form of singing. It's not true at all. It's just a different. It's like different colors of paint. You know? Yeah. There's different. There's different ways of doing it. And what and, and I was just teaching another student and I was talking about the imperfections of the voice. And, uh, and that is the hallmark, that's the foundation of a lot of the Broadway and pop singing has to do with what the imperfections of the voice, because that's what gives the voice a lot of character. Mm -hmm. So if you listen to Elaine Stritch, you know Elaine Stritch? No. She's a Broadway singer. She died a couple years, she lived into her 90s, but she was a lower voiced mezzo soprano mm. uh, Broadway singer, and she, she was a heavy drinker. And her voice was raspy and but she could carry the melody, and she was damn expressive, and everybody loved her. She gave her own Carnegie Hall concert 15, 20 years ago, and she got a standing ovation. Yeah. So, so you know, uh, don't don't you know don't don't take the snobbery, uh, take it with a grain of salt, because there's there's an artistry to Broadway singing. There's an artistry, certainly to pop singing, that I give full kudos and respect to. So anyway, what kind of uh, Repertoire? Did you uh, did, did you have you worked on the most? I mean, if you if you what do you sing uh, Whitney Houston songs or what? What do you try to sing? Um, right now, I'm learning more jazz songs. Um, okay. Yeah. So before I was, I was I'm a singer songwriter. I sang my own things, uh -huh. so I, I didn't have a, a repertoire. Okay. Yeah. But I really appreciate um, like Ella Fitzgerald, her technique, and um, when we do opera. Uh, when I did it with Professor Serrano, you know, we went to, I'm, I'm looking at the, here, summertime, yeah, yeah. and, well, yeah, and so that, that went both ways, yeah. so. See, a lot of times, you see, I, and I, I, so I just put out my third pop album myself, it was released yesterday, and I got reviews and this and that, and I'm a bass, but I sing, like, I sing pop, and my pop voice very different from my opera voice. Mm -hmm. So the, but the problem with the pop sing, singing and singers usually is that they don't have the patience to sit down and do vocal leases and sing Mi Re La and La Re Mi and Do, do Mi So and all that stuff. And I tell people, I say, well, you know, football players, they don't, they don't play football in order to play football. They lift weights and they do exercises to play football. Yeah. So singing pop songs doesn't mean that you, it doesn't mean that it's going to make you a better pop singer. Yeah. I mean, it's good that you're singing, but mm -hmm. in order to tackle, so, that, so what it comes down to is, I'm here to help you fix whatever it is that you're having trouble with. Yeah. And I'm sure as a pop singer, there are tones that you're probably trying to sing that, you know, you're going to want to work with. So yeah. she did vocalises with you, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. So uh, have you done lip trills? Like that? Mm, not a whole lot. Vocalises, you, you mean you mean when we're doing scales and we're and we're we're doing different vowels? Yes, yeah. I I, I never heard it called vocalises, but yes, that's vocalises. what we, that's what we technically call mm -hmm. it. You know, yes. Uh, the, the lip trills are important because uh, I have a book I wrote on singing. It's called Starting to Sing, Volume One, and it's for young, beginning and kids and starting singers. And basically, I say, you know, what are we as singers? We are we are air converters. Mm. Air convert. We convert air into sound. Mm -hmm. That's what we're doing. So the sound is the easier part. The, the, the air is the more mysterious part of the singing because we don't see it. We don't really think about it a lot of times. But, you know, it's the concept.
conservation of the air and it's being able because obviously if you if you waste air you don't have enough to hold the tone and you blow the air out of your mouth and you can't hold the tone yeah so, so the lip trail is an important exercise in order to 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 be aware of what your breath is doing that it's there that it exists so uh, i'm very aware of my breath and i am able to use it in a cons conservative way as i'm singing so if, you know if we can uh, learn to should i try it i try it we're gonna go Did I do notice, first of all, the difference between what I'm doing and what you're doing is that yours is uh, explosive, very high energy. It's like you're, it's like you're a, you're a machine, right? <laughs> and I'm very relaxed, very mm. like it's water is dribbling out of your mouth, you know? Like, yeah. Uh, half of singing really should be about being ultra relaxed. It's it's the combination of, of, of massive relaxation combined with firmness. Uh. Yoga. You ever do yoga? Yes. Yeah, yoga. So, so you're relaxed. I mean, you even do exercises at the beginning of the yoga, right? You breathe in. Mm, yeah. Breathe out. Okay, you can almost fall asleep by breathing in. So when you sing, you need to embrace because everybody's usually they're they're they're, they're attention, attention, attention. Mm -hmm. I gotta sing now. I gotta sing now. I'm tense. Yeah. I'm tense. I gotta sing. I gotta yeah. sing. That's counter counterproductive. Well, you should be singing like you're uh, like you're sitting in a chair reading a book, ready to fall asleep. Almost, almost. Mm. Okay, so try it again. Relax, relax your lower jaw, and let the water dribble out of your mouth. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> Wait. Right. See, what you're doing is you're pursing your lips here <laughs> to create tension in order to explode and I, that's not what is required of the exercise it's, it's more about making it loose and so they, yeah yeah when i do the sound it's it starts to fall apart right right because you're adding attention to this part of your mouth that, that is counterproductive yeah that was better that was better oh, actually don't even move on it just hold one tone just sing this is all for you. I'll sing to a higher one. Better, better. What was that? Like? Oh yeah, papers over there. I'm laughing because it's I, I'm, it's shockingly hard. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's hard. That's good. So you, you started to get it. So let's just move up and try it. We're going to do it. I didn't hear the, the lower part. You're going da 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 da. No, no, I'm just going da 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 da. Oh, da 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 da. Okay. Then stop. And then we're gonna do. Okay. You know what I'm doing? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, so. Higher, but you see you're relaxed and you're not, you're not. 
make me laugh. I'm impressed because it said good tones you got up there. Oh. I couldn't tell you, I don't know. Uh-huh. See, this is another issue that you get sometimes with pop and jazz singers is that they, you don't play the keyboard at all, right? I mean, I'm, I'm learning it, but I never went, oh, this is the highest I could sing. I, I didn't, never did that. Because what helps is to see what, what the, I don't know if you have any trouble with high notes. I mean, you don't. Okay, because usually, you know, it, it helps to know what your parameters are. It helps to know What's your highest note is if you're working because because otherwise you're guessing all the time otherwise you never know what your high tone is because you haven't defined it so you have no idea that's what happens a lot of times when they hire a singer to sing the national anthem at a, at a baseball game mm. and, and they say okay what key do you want us to play because usually they have a cd that's got an, an accompaniment in, in 12 different keys mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and i'll say to the person okay what key are you singing it in and they'll say oh i don't know I don't know anything about that. And then they'll pick a key that's too high for them. I see. And then they, and they start singing it and they crack because they, 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 they didn't know what yeah. their top was. Yeah, that's a, so a that's lot of times a, when, that, when that happens, you'll, you'll watch a baseball game and all of a sudden somebody will ah! mm -hmm. <laughs> they, they, Because they don't know. Yeah. And that happens with kids too. Like I taught children at right, the John Robert Powers uh, talent agency for a whole summer and you get kids They'd say, okay, I'm going to sing this song, and they get up and they start singing it. They have no idea what key they're singing in. They just pick a key out of the thin air, and then they crack, and they've made a bad sound, and they said, oh, yesterday I sang it great. Yeah. And I say, well, what key did you sing it in yesterday? Oh, I don't know. So obviously today they picked the key that was two steps higher, and they cracked them. I feel like I could sing really, really high and really, really low, but I, can, wow. I can't tell you how high or how low. Right, right. So obviously then, so you don't pay attention to like a song when you're singing it. You don't know what key it's in. I'm just singing it. Right, you're singing it. So it's guesswork. So you have to just feel out whether the song is too high or too low for you. And sometimes you see when we, when there's a thing in opera called tessitura. Mm -hmm. And what it, what it means is, is that it's, it's how the song sits. Mm. What that means is like if a song has a whole bunch of high notes, Mm -hmm. and it's asking you to sing a lot of high notes, mm -hmm. you're going to start gathering tension up there in, in here. You're going to go, well, I know, ah, 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 ah. And, and, oh, and as the minute goes by, your voice is going to stop working for you. So um, you must, I mean, obviously everybody has their faults. So, you know, there must be songs that you sing that you have trouble with. Yes, I don't, I don't remember okay. which ones. You don't remember which one? No. Okay. Because when I usually when I teach a lesson, I'll ask somebody to, to throw at me your your worst, your worst. Oh. Throw at me something that you have the hardest time with. Throw something at me that, you know, you have the hardest time that you, you, you crack all the time or the voice just can't handle it well, or whatever. Well, the, the so thing is, out, yeah, yeah, before I took lessons, I thought, you know, being like a rock pop singer, I thought my chest voice was my voice until I learned that I could switch the register and, and sing higher, and that was singing as well. I thought that was just faking it. And so I'm, I'm learning how to incorporate to go to the higher notes, and it's not gonna bother me. I see. So, well, I'll hear that when you start singing. Okay. So now, no more lip trills. We're gonna do some actual, sing some vowels. Okay. So we're gonna sing, uh, me, we're gonna sing Mi Re La, okay? We're gonna go up an octave. Mi Re La. 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 Okay. Oh, you went into the falsetto. Yeah. Okay.
okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay, I, I, could, I could probably go lower, but we started there. Can you, can you step back a bit? Because the voice is, is going to peak. It's peaking. Yeah, away. okay. Okay. Mirela, 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 Mirela. I, I can't hear it. But I'll just, I can't hear it, but I'm gonna assume it's me. Okay. Me, Rayla. Me, Rayla. Okay, now as you go up there, now I can see what is happening with your the top there. Because it's spread, spread, spread. So when you sing this, now as you go higher and the voice starts to, and the voice starts to spread on the high note. I have to push down. No, but sing, don't, do what's called vowel modification. Gonna modify. It's not gonna be Ray now. Don't say literally Ray, like you know, Mr. Ray Charles. Say Rat. Rat. Me. Okay. Rat. Rat. Okay. Me. Rat. Okay. Me. Because that's what you should feel like when you sing. You should, it should feel really delicious. 
when you're singing. That's a good, I like that. I like that analogy. Yeah. Yeah. Mm, I hear your dog. You have a dog there, huh? I do. Yeah, I hear him. So his, I hear his little, little paws on the floor. Oh, a little sweetie. Okay. I hope she doesn't bark. Okay. Mm. I, add, I add what you know what a diphthong is. 
Yes. Yes. Okay. So diphthongs are the enemy of all singers. Mm -hmm. Enemy. We have to fight the diphthong. Mm -hmm. What that means is they have a tendency to want to come out too early. We have a tendency to sing into the diphthong. Mm -hmm. And that when we end up in this nether region of halfway back. Change. Yeah, what are you going to say? I have a question. Um, you said something very interesting. When we're going to sing a vowel and it's too high, you go to the next vowel. Are you saying the next vowel as, as in A, E, I, O, U, like that kind of um, progression? Will you sing yeah, yeah. A, then you're saying E? And no, if I'm no, 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 that's not what I mean. Oh. There's variations of A, right? So oh. as we move from one vowel to the next, it's sort of like colors, like in a crayon, crayon box. Mm -hmm. You've got purple. Mm -hmm. But then there's light purple, mm. there's dark purple, mm -hmm. there's purple that's almost pink, there's yeah. purple that's almost what a red, you know? Yeah. So what I mean is like you sing A, A, and A, 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 you're moving to the next, the next, maybe it is the E to A, I guess, E, A, A, O, the, we can only, there's just tiny little variations mm -hmm. that take place between a literal E, E, and A, those are one, but in between those two, there's this little infinity of different variations of E going to F. Yeah. And we have to, we have to, we have to gravitate towards that because one, one is uh, looser than the next, and then looser than the next, and looser and then than the next until we get to the literal next vowel. I see. Yeah. But what makes this, what makes the listener think that he's hearing A? instead of a is because you're singing it on a high tone which is vibrating faster mm -hmm. it vibrates the a into a space where it sounds like a if that makes any sense that makes a lot of sense so you're because yeah. when you said i'm going to sing this and you went you sang that song and i'm like when is he going to change it and then you explained see i changed it i'm like i didn't even notice it yeah yeah mm -hmm. yeah so like if you sing um uh, oh god what's that okay so for instance, with a, with a vowel, with a word, to a speaking person, the word break, B-R-E-A-K, how right. many syllables does it have? B -er four. Well, you're a smarty, you're oh. smarty, because it's, I, to a speaking person, it's one syllable. The word has break, it's one syllable word. But to a singer, <laughs> it's, it's B -er -er break. There's five I, I went B -er -ache. Right, right, right. That's what a singer. Yeah. With, as, as you sing it, so if I sing, I, I'm singing like as if I'm stretching the word out, like it's a, like it's like it's a taffy, like yeah. it's taffy. I think. I mean, I I wouldn't. I think I would normally answer. It's a one word. It's a one syllable word. But since we're talking about uh, breaking things apart, I I went there. I broke yeah, it. Yeah, right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Of course. Yeah. So what I'm getting at is that words. Words are like sort of like. Did you ever, did you ever take a balloon? When I was a kid, you take a balloon that's not blown up. Yeah. And you write a, you write a word on it, or you write a, you draw a little picture with a pen on it. Then you blow it up, and then there's this big picture on it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You blew it up because you wrote it when it was small. Yeah. That's what we're doing with words when mm. we sing them. We're putting, we're blowing them up with air, so the word. Oh, that's great. All of a sudden, it turns into like a big, a big. Uh, word. Uh, balloon. A yeah. Big balloon. Yeah. And we're singing, we're singing the air inside of the consonants. Mm. Inside of the consonants, there's vowels. Yeah. Right? So, um, but as a pop singer, that's important for you to know because you have to sing words that sound much more literally like what they are. You can't afford to be, make, like opera singers, they mangle English mm -hmm. when they sing it because they make it sound like this when I'm singing like this. <laughs> when I was standing on the corner, oh because they want to sound like opera singers. Right? Yeah. So they, they, they sing words and say, what the hell did he sing? What was what were those words? Well, the pop singer, it's like, I know you, baby. I did that. I'm telling you right now. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's very clear. Yes. Exactly the words you're singing because you're being, you can't be, because if you sing like this, it's like if you try to sing, try to sing a rock song like an opera singer. Uh, I can't make you love me if you don't. Unless. I can't make your heart <laughs> <laughs> Unless you're Freddie Mercury. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but Prince and Bonnie Raitt. Yeah. <laughs> did, did that song, you know. Um, but I, 
just can't be rocking, man. Oh, yes, I'm rocking you, baby. You know, it just sounds ludicrous. Yes. So, anyway, what song are you working on? Probably, I'm, I'm working on Cry Me a River right now, which I, I find it a little difficult. Oh, you find it a little what? A little difficult, maybe, because I want to sing it stronger, but it, it, I think I have to not push so much and sing it higher. I mean, it could be like what key I'm in. I, I don't know. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just making it up in my head, but I'm well, working okay. on it. Okay, first of all, you have to lose. The most, one of the most important things is to lose the fright of expectation. Yeah. The fright of expectation of, of the listener. Uh, you're not singing for this is this is counterintuitive. You're not singing for the people you're singing for. You're singing for yourself, really. Yeah, you know, I believe in that. The, yeah, you're singing the way you you like. For the, now, now there's again there's a certain parameter that you have to be in because you're singing a jazz song. Yeah. <clears throat> as opposed to a pop song. Pop song, anything goes. Yeah. Anything goes. Jazz song, not so much. Yeah. You know, and as and as you move and, and jazz and Broadway. So Broadway to me, you don't sing any Broadway, do you? No. Okay, because Broadway to me is the most dangerous, destructive, uh, and yet and yet very satisfying and powerful form of singing because you have to do it the way the composer wrote it. Mm -hmm. But most of the composers aren't very good composers, so they make the people sing vocal gymnastics that hurts the voice. Like mm -hmm. I can't stand listening to uh, Phantom of the Opera. And stuff like that because the singers are screaming and they're they're abusing their voices but that's what the composer is asking them to do mm -hmm. and when you sing pop you can sing any damn thing you want you can and then especially if you write your own pop, do you write your own song i do yeah yeah so if you write your own songs you can sing in whatever key you want you can make you can stay in that you don't have to sing high notes if you don't want you can do whatever you want yeah it's your song right yeah, yes so you can you can keep within your own limitations is yeah. what I'm saying. but but i feel like that's limited me because when I started taking voice lessons with Professor Serrano, I realized I could do a heck of a lot more. Right. I didn't know. Well, I see you got a fantastic instrument. So I didn't uh, know. It's very powerful. So it's just a matter of finding the right repertoire for you, and um, and then you doing your own. I think it's really a limitation for you not to have familiarity with the keyboard. I, mean, I have a keyboard. I don't know if you could see it right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, but do you? So what do you do? I practice on it. I'm learning. I'm learning it. Okay. Do you um, see? So what you should do then is be start becoming familiar with your own range. Mm -hmm. see, that's what this is the limitation of you and I having a voice lesson on Zoom is that if you were in the studio with me, I could sh show you my hand on the piano, and I could show you the range that you that you were singing in. Mm -hmm. You can figure out your your ultimate range. That's mm -hmm. what I want to hear. Mm -hmm. Now, what I mean by ultimate range is you've got your your ultimate top note, your ultimate low note, mm -hmm. and that ultimate high note and low note should not should not be what you sing on stage. Mm -hmm. You should always have what's called a ceiling. Mm -hmm. so you should always have a high note that's just one step or two steps below whatever your ultimate high note is. Like the high note you can absolutely cannot sing any higher than. I see. And you absolutely cannot sing any lower than that. Yeah. And so you never sing those in front of anybody. Mm -hmm. But they give you a little bit of room so that you know you've got some space above and space below. Yeah. See, so, but you don't know what your range is. So yeah. if you have the benefit of a piano, you should start to fiddle around on there and sing with it and see how high you can go and see how low you can go. When you, and whatever vowel. What? When, you, when I'm doing that, do I do it on the chest voice or or like 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 the soprano like the head voice? I think you froze. I'll wait till you unfreeze. Hello. That was a good question, and you froze. <laughs> uh, do it however you can get up there. Oh, there you go. Oh, you froze there for a second. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. you. Yes, I hear you. Yes. Oh, it says my it says my internet connection is unstable. That's okay. You froze for a minute, but then the answer was do it however I can get up there. Yeah, however you can get up there. And, okay. Uh, and then, I mean, ultimately that's my job then. So like you get up, and then I'd say, oh well, it would be a lot easier if you did it like, like this or did it like that. But the main thing is, is to uh, to just try to to get to to get the notes. 
because that's how you that's how you get comfortable is you keep punching away at your range until you create enough space that that's your range and you're comfortable with it. So when I'll tell you, no, how many times I've had I've given, go ahead. When when I you know somebody says sing in this key or that key, but how does the key figure out what range you're in? That's a different question. What's your range and what's your key are two different things. Yeah, your range has nothing to do with the keys. Yeah. I mean, your range is what it is. There's yeah. no definition of a key. Is it, is it, does it take a long time to figure out a range? No, if I was there with you, we, we could figure it out. I mean, I, I can do it here, and we can hear what your ultimately comfortable high note is. So let's just do... Uh, So let's do uh, A E. I'm gonna do A E A E. And I'm singing an octave higher. I'm, I'm singing. I can't sing yeah. in your range. Okay. So I'm singing in an octave okay. lower. See. Mm -hmm. but, Tessario, Tessario, Tessura is probably three. Oh, no, that's not Tessitura. No, oh. no, your your workable range is um, um, almost four octaves. I mean, so like that last low note you sang, I would never sing that in front of anybody. Uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, <laughs> it sounds yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I mean, two tones above that. Yeah. Legitimate. So if somebody asked you to sing something down there, you'd be chesting it. You'd be putting it in your chest. Yeah. Way. But you you'd be singing it. And way up on top, you, yeah, you got you got top you have top to spare. You have top to burn. Yeah. So That's whistle tones. What yeah, I gotta remember like that Minnie Rippleton song. Love in you. You know, you know <laughs> now Ariana Grande does a whistle Mariah Carey. So that that was fun and I figured out how to do it. Yeah. I guess my problem is 
in the middle, blending the chest voice to go to the high voice, there's a certain little range there, notes that I feel are weak and they don't feel seamless. And that's when I, when I started um, singing with Professor Serrano, she's like, don't push it, just always sing in, in this voice. I, I like both, you know, because I could use it, but I, I feel like there's a, there's a little, I don't know what the word is, range, there, that it's not strong, and I, I want to strengthen that, the, the transition the to, part. The, the way to do it is to sing the entire range, and then what you have to do is, is stop segmenting the voice into different ranges, into different parts. You know, it's, a snake is a snake. It's not, it's not four parts of a snake. Mm. You know, the whole voice is from head to tail. So the range is from is one thing from head to tail. So you have to you have to practice it mm -hmm. from, from head to tail. You cannot oh. just sit in the middle or sit in the upper part or sit in the lower part. They can't be different. I mean, there might be different colors in there. Yeah. So, so two ways to do it is to do entire entire vocalese from bottom to top, and then at the same time, make sure you do it fast enough so that you're not stopping to think about what you're doing in the middle and in the in the upper part. Mm -hmm. It's just gotta be one motion, like it's one long piece of spaghetti. <laughs> you know, it's not pieces of, four pieces of spaghetti. Yeah. See? It's like, it's like when I go, <laughs> Yes. Yes. saying use your whole voice when you're going a hey, are you doing the low and then when you finally reach that high note it's on it's on the the higher one or it's in the same in the same um no it's octave. switching there's there's things that are switching but i'm doing it so fast that you don't oh, notice it no. see the problem is that people do their exercises too damn slow and, and then they're constantly auto correcting and auto censoring and they're listening to themselves and they're changing things as they're going because they're not driving. It's like driving a car where, where you have to think about shifting the gear. So well, you're eventually you shift the gear without thinking. So you're, you're, you're going like, like, two octaves Vast. 
Okay. Hey. <laughs> well, you have to be more exact with the tone. Yeah. The note. That's what's going to help if you use the keyboard because you'll be able. You got to play on the keyboard. I will. I, I I I didn't know I could do all those things. That yeah. these are great great um, tips ideas. Yeah. So go two octaves at a time. What? Two octaves at a time or three octaves? Two. 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 Okay. When do I switch? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why it's good. See, when we do the, if you do a lesson, like if you want to have another one, we can do another one. Okay. But if you do the lesson, usually record it so that you can listen to yourself and sing with yourself. And then the better you get, the more you're going to be singing better because yeah. you're singing with success. Yes, yes. I think success that's you a, had before. Yes, okay? that's that's a great tip because that, like I said, that was my like, like you said, I was I was separating the voice when it's just really one. That's that's right. If I take anything out of this lesson, that's huge. <laughs> all the notes but I'm getting there. <laughs> well, so what's happening is that you're going into sort of a falsetto uh -huh. where you don't have to because I, I just heard you sing full voice all the way up to a high C oh. and then when, you're trying to connect, when you're trying to connect the bottom yeah. when you get into the mid range all of a sudden you back off mm -hmm. and you can't you shouldn't back off oh. you should try, what I'm getting at is that you should try to sing the, the top note with the same feeling and fullness and firmness that you do with the bottom note. Let's try it. Obviously the bottom note's gonna be the most comfortable yeah. note, you see? And that's why they say to a lot of singers, if you can sing well on the bottom, it'll make your top good. Okay. Why? Because the ease and relaxation, yet firmness of the bottom voice will get translated to your top voice. So like, for instance, if I were to sing, but let's say I'm gonna eliminate the middle notes. If I do, if I do, uh, I'm just gonna sing, no, I just went three octaves. No, don't stop. I just did three octaves, and I didn't move, I didn't flinch, and I sang everything in line. You didn't even see my mouth move. No, I didn't. Everything was still. Yeah. Everything was happening here, here. And you go up and, but see, that's because my voice is totally lined up. Try that exercise. Uh, no, no. Do, do on the high note what you did on the middle note. Uh, I don't even know what note I'm singing. Can I hear it? Ah. Uh, now the next one is ah. Uh, 
Ah. Oh. Ah. That. See now that the first two were great. The third one is not great. Straight. Because because you're pushing it, you're blowing it out, and you're not matching it. Ah. Uh, let me try it again. It's about feeling. You ah. that I've never heard before that are very useful and I really appreciate it so much. Yeah, so, so I mean, I, I'm not trying to take uh, uh, Professor Serrano's students away from her, but uh, she would not mind uh, us working together if it's helping you because that's what she wants in order uh, ultimately for you to be a better singer. Yes. So if you want to work again, just uh, text me or yep. email me. I think you've got my email yep. now. Yep. Uh, and uh, and we, can, we can do some more singing and hopefully... When I'm in New York, you know, if you, you want to, I have a studio that I work at there. You can come and you can do an actual real, a real voice lesson. That would be fantastic. I would love that. Thank you. And I'll play the piano and you can actually sing. Uh, and then I can see what you're doing. Yeah. Didn't get a chance to, I didn't get a chance to hear you sing a song. Next so time. That's unfortunate. <laughs> unfortunate. Okay. okay. But we, we just still did some good things. Yes. All right. Have a good one there. Thank you so much. Good luck. Okay. Good luck with your audition. They're, they're silly if they don't hire you.
Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Recording stopped.